Okay. So this is where my house once stood. You can see all the debris that got washed away, especially my belongings. I had to find my belongings that very next day, early morning, but I couldn't find most of them. That very day when the typhoon typhoon Bokpa arrived, I was in my house watching the wave breaking on the shore and it was starting to come up, breaking on the very uh, land level. And it was low tide. I knew that once it started to get high tide, the wave would be breaking on my house, not on the shore. So I concluded that uh, my house, I'm going to lose my house. So I was able to uh, take out some of my stuff, which I, I was able to take. But most of my stuff, I was not well informed about the wave, so I didn't have time to get everything out the house. My wife just packed everything, put it in her Tupperware, and she thought the wind might break our house, but all the stuff will stay inside the house. You can see the bits moved inside, and the coconut trees are now standing in the, in water. the water. Yeah. The National Emergency Force was informing the whole community about the, the speed of the, the wind and the location of the typhoon, but it never did mention something about the high tide rising above until such very moment when it was almost too late to get everything out of the house. That's when they told us we have to go from this area. So by the time we evacuated, uh, the whole place was left for the breaking waves to come in. And the waves were coming, rolling about on top of my head. That moment I stood in my house watching the wave come breaking all the walls, my house started shaking and I knew I'm going to lose this house. If it wasn't for the wave, my house would still be standing. The wind was not that strong. So when the waves were coming, where did you guys go? Well, we first we moved to the, the elementary school, which is built partly cement, and that's a typhoon shelter. That's why they built it. We were there when the waves started breaking in, and, and, the, and the water was coming in on the road. Even big logs were rolling on the road, and we finally realized we don't have to be here. We have to move up. down west. Yeah. We all lined up and drove our car toward west, where we spent the night at Bayraktabe on the other side of town, where the wind was not that strong. But it was a bad feeling knowing that your house, your house is breaking down and, and you're uh, away trying to get some sleep which is almost impossible. Not only myself got destroyed, you see the there are five of us in this area who are completely wiped out. And the, and the other village on my right toward Koror on Guklau, there are another five people who completely lost their house. The typhoon was Coming toward Palau when people of National Emergency Force were informing Palau about the typhoon and, and people were well informed about the typhoon. And that's a good thing, that's why nobody died. There's no fatality or there's no big injury involved in this. Everyone were scared enough to move out of their place. Except myself, I had to visit my house to make that final conclusion that I'm going to lose my house. And I was able to 
take away my chainsaw, <laughs> which I bought about a month ago. <laughs> you see, I was able to put some of it in the car. And if only I knew the wave would be rolling in my house, I moved all my belongings somewhere. Yeah. I had the car. Yeah. They didn't say anything about yeah. surges. Yeah, but right after about 30 minutes, when the wave was breaking on the shore and coming tirelessly wild, yeah. that's when they informed us that we would have to move in. It was almost impossible to get everything out of the house when the house was shaking and it was dangerous. Water went inside to about 250 yards that way from the shore when some other parts the water went all the way in because of the the clearance the water can flow through like the main road the main road once i i try to visit my place i had to stop about 500 yards away because the water is running on the road yeah. And that's salt water. <laughs> right, so all the taro patches are brown. Yeah, now this whole community will not sell any taro for market uh, for months and months because they're, they're all turning, they're all spoiling. They're, they're turning brown and, and you can smell that smell of dead plants when you go to the taro patches. Yeah. Those waves were crashing here on land, beyond our reef. All right, Uncle Francis, thank you so much for doing this video and sharing your story. I really appreciate it.